So I, I don't know whether you guys can hear me. If you can hear me, just type in yes. Okay, thank you so much uh, for replying to me. Okay, good. Thank you so much for hearing me. So without much further ado, let us get really started. Uh, thank you so much again, once again, for coming in. Thank you for replying me as well so that we know that uh, you guys can hear me. Of course, now most important here is that I hope that, that all of you have your dinner. Uh, because today is a long long day for myself so i hope that you guys are also have a long day and it's not easy for you to be still continue listening to me after a hard day work so i will do my very best to quickly uh, do up this uh, sharing with you guys here so that you can understand how it works uh, today my focus is about uh, mastering the entry and the exit strategy so i think a lot of people uh, may want to understand a little bit more about I mean, if you want to buy a property, we also need to think about, do we know how to exit? The question is how to exit as well. So later on, I'll be having some questions and uh, I hope that all of you can join me and type in the answer so that we keep ourselves, our brain right working so that we all can learn together. Uh, that's the ultimate aim that I hope that all of you can uh, work with me as well. So without much further ado, let's us, uh, get started. So uh, just a disclaimer for myself, uh, whatever I'm sharing, of course, there's certain risk here and there. So what is important here is that you take, uh, everything can be calculated as long as you know exactly what you are going into. So my job here is to provide you the information. In fact, all the information out there generally will have uh, are all through URA. I'm just trying to give you all the information in a digest manner. Hopefully you have a better and clearer picture here. So I think uh, a lot of people say, Kelvin, why do I need to exit every time and end up paying more? What does it mean to every one of you when I ask this question? The reason why I'm saying this is because a lot of people say, Kelvin, you know, last time I bought something at $800 per square foot. If I were to sell my property at $800 per square foot, which I bought last time, today I got to pay $1,005 or $2,000 per square foot. Does it make sense for me to actually do so? And, and that resulted a lot of people say, Kelvin, I better don't sell my property because I'd rather hold on to the asset. So the question is, is it the right move? Is it the better choice of uh, doing that? So today, I just want to share with you whether yes or no, you decide. So most of the sellers always would probably say that I buy something. I mean, I bought so cheap last time. I just finished my expo uh, last two weeks ago. So one of the owners was telling me, one of the buyers at the expo, she is 75 years old, 75 years old, or she is 75 years old. She told me that uh, she bought a property back then, don't know how many years back, maybe at least 50 years back. How many of you can guess? She told me she bought the property at how much dollar per square foot? Can you all make a guess and time inside the chat room? How much did they pay? How much did she pay for her property back then in terms of PSF? Can you type inside the chat room? If you can type in the correct answer, I'll let you know. I, 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 I pro I'll probably meet up with you. $500 per square foot, $150 per square foot. 500, 500, 400. Oh, uh, oh, CJ knows. Uh, she, yeah. Well, the answer that he, she gave it to me, I was really shocked because he was telling me it's $6.50 per square foot. I said, wow, is it you are buying, uh, you are renting out your property or you are actually purchasing? He said, it's really purchasing. But I believe so. You know why? Because 30 years ago, you probably buy a semi D for 400,000, easily three to 4,000 square feet land. So she was say, saying, I mean, I, I mean, at that point of time, we were definitely not sure about all the pricing, but definitely she's someone who is so experienced in the market was sharing with me. So I thought what well, that was cheap, but what she says that she continued to buy as she moved forward. And that's why today she still can go to my seminars to listen to me at the age of 75. And that's wonderful here, right? So this is something that always people say, oh, too high risk to upgrade now because, um, uh, why do, why do I want to stress myself over this, especially now when interest rate is high? So a lot of people become comfortable. So what is the end result of being comfortable? Later on, I will touch on as well. Of course, most of the common objection people will say, Kelvin, because of my children's education here and there. But I can also say, but today you own a three bedroom, you can buy back the same condo at a four bedroom as well. But you are still actually staying within the same vicinity, but actually you take opportunity to upgrade. But a lot of people say, why do I need to do so? Later on, I will explain further. So I'm worried about the installment too high. Yes, I think because you see, most of the people will work and forgot. Them. I mean, I mean, it's naturally thinking that if I were to buy something that is more expensive, my installment could be higher. But what is the objective? Later on, we can touch on. Of course, people say no time. You know, everybody is so busy working hard. But actually, a lot of people, people were busy working so hard, right? But are they doing the right thing? 
are they actually making the right decision? Uh, and that's something that I always uh, be concerned of. And that's the reason why today I want to touch on all this. A uh, passive income is more important. Well, is it the really the true thing, passive income? Because this is something that I would like to address and how it works so that you have a better understanding. Uh, now, let me just share with you guys here. So every one of you here, if you were to buy a 1,000 square feet HDB in 2003, 234,000. Can I ask every one of you to type inside the chat group, how much do you think this price will be today? How much? Can type inside the chat group. 650, 600K, 800K, 600K. Of course, I'm not specific in terms of location. I'm specific in terms of average price in the whole market. Wow, so different answer. Huh? So you look at it, the numbers is almost close to 600K. Very close, very close. Some of you are very close, right? So can you imagine, uh, let's say this person is 40 years old, right? Now towards here is 60 years old already. Can you imagine today you are 60 years old and you are holding on to an asset of 588,000? Will it be good enough? That's my concern. Next, if let's say you are holding on to a private property, 602,000. 2023 down the road, how much do you think your price is? Can you, can you, can you type inside? 1.5 million, 1.6 million, 1.8 million, hmm. 1.8 million, 1.87 million. Hey, so you can see uh, the choice of asset is also very important, you know. You look at this person who bought a HDB and today, 20 years down the road, right? This is only this amount. But this guy who bought 600,000, today the value of the asset is 1.87. That means when this person reaches 60 years old, well, he has a better amount eventually. But a lot of people say, Kelvin, I want to be very comfortable. I just want to choose to own a HDB and stay there for the until the age 65. You are not wrong in that sense because that's what my parents teach us as well. But what is the impact of it? If we don't sell the property today at age 60, I only have this sum of money. Is it good enough? That's what you need to decide. So, of course, you're holding on to a landed property. If you were to buy, buy something at half a million at that point of time, how much do you think you'll be? Can you key in the answer? Four million. Wow. Six point six point five million. Two point two million. Huh? So, wow, exactly. Two point two million dollar. So, is it good enough? At least uh, this guy who bought a lender at that point of time, uh, today the value is what? 2 by 2 million. As much as it's good enough, it's better than here and it's better than here. So what am I trying to tell everybody here? I mean, if you can choose not to sell your asset, but the problem here is that your absolute value on your net worth, uh, is it good enough when you want to talk about retirement? And that is my concern because Eventually, we all know one thing here, right? I mean, today, if we, today, look at even a HDB flat. My, my agent was telling me, even at Sengkang, Pongo area, he just transacted a five-room HDB flat. It's already at 700 over 1,000. Sambawang, a five-room is already at 700 over 1,000. Today, we are talking about a person who bought this and eventually left with 600,000. So the question is, is it good enough eventually to retire? That is my little concern. And that's the reason why I'm sharing this with you, right? If you hold your property for so long, does it mean that you can be better off? The answer is not. Because the value of the asset when you reach 60 years old may not be enough when you look at retirement. Because you can be very comfortable now because you're paying like, like this person. He be, can be very comfortable in staying in HEB flat because he's so comfortable, he don't need to pay high installment. But the problem of not paying high installment, but today, they only left with this amount. So the question is, is it worthwhile? Is it good enough? That's my concern, right? So the whole idea here is that you need to understand this, how it works. So of course, uh, what's the comparative cost net financing and inflation, real versus 
uh, real versus real. Uh, what does she mean by real versus real? Oh, give me a second. What do you mean by real, real versus real? I don't understand. Uh. So uh, that one I don't understand. So whatever that, that you've seen here, right? This is my research people who did this because I asked them to help me to research. Of course, like you say, landed, how come it's 1,000 square feet? It doesn't matter because I use a square feet. If I multiply by 2,000 square feet, the figures will also be different. So, but we take an average in terms of calculation uh, based on this. And that's how we get the answer from here. So the most, the ultimate aim, I just want to let you understand one very important thing. You have to ask yourself this question. If today you are age 40, and when you reach age 65, based on this example, at this amount, is it a good amount for you to retire? That is my question to every one of you. So what am I trying to tell everybody here? I'm trying to let you understand that, look at your current asset that you are holding on to. If you don't do anything, look at your age, whatever age you are now. Your asset is how much? You ask yourself this question, when you reach this age, if the property did not appreciate in terms of value, let's all stay flat as per normal. Is it good enough? I'm not asking any one of you to sell your house or whatever, no. I just want you to understand one thing that property, the, the cost of living and the inflation of the asset has grown so fast. But if you just having an asset that you are comfortable with, but down the road, is it enough for you to retire? If let's say this person is 40 years old and just now he was holding on to a landed property, that would be a 2.2 million. So with a 2.2 million, if he was to downgrade to a $1 million property, at least he still have a million dollar in terms of net value. So why am I sharing with everybody about this exercise here? I just want you to know that why is it so important to keep moving forward? It's not about making profit. Making profit from a property is always to me is a bonus because no one can gauge whether how much profit you can make. But we can only know one thing that your current asset, your current asset, if you don't do anything, if the price doesn't appreciate at all down the road, is it enough for you to retire? That is what you need to think because for me, I just want to show you how it works because you need to be very clear about your final decision. I can be comfortable enough now, but I will be I will not have enough down the road. And when you reach 60 years old, 60 plus years old, you don't have the energy to keep working so hard, you know? Not that you cannot, but you want to have more time to what? Relax your life. So what I'm trying to share with you here is that you just need to be uncomfortable at this point of time, but you can choose to be very comfortable down the road. I would choose to be this way. That's why I say, I always tell people, it's good to have delayed gratification and not instant gratification. Instant, gratific instant gratification means that you really have a lot of better things now, but you don't have, your future will be a stress, in my opinion. That's the reason why my education to people is not about just selling, buying house. I want you to understand that how can your future be resilient? How can you future prove yourself that you can be sustainable even when market goes any time, not in a good favor, but you're still having a good amount in your asset value. And that is something that I feel uh, in, is important for many people out there. So the question is, should I sell my HDB flat in 2023 for those who are holding on to HDB? No right, no wrong answer. I only give you answer. I give you information based on what I know, right? So if you look at today, the HDB from 2013 after the cooling measure has all the way came down and flat for almost 2000 and uh, I would say it's 2020 almost like seven to eight years eh, before it start to pick up. And do you realize one thing? People who actually hold on to a HDB four room flat, until today, 2023, 10 years, 10 years, actually the price only increased by 76,000. I'm not saying that everybody equal. I'm just talking about average. Eh? It's only $76,000 for the last 10 years. But do you know that if someone were to sell their HDB at that point of time and change to buy something else, maybe he already make more than what he actually makes. But a lot of people choose to be comfortable. Then what happened next? 
Now the HDB has gone to one of the highest point now. The question is, should I hold on to the asset? I only can share with you guys here why the HDB price cannot be moving that fast because it's a controlled asset. Why, what do I mean by control? Because we all know that most of the Singaporeans are living in HDB. Definitely, the government has to control the HDB prices from moving too fast. Because why? Affordability issue. It's an affordability issue. They cannot allow the prices to go so high, eventually they cannot afford. And that will be a, a social problem and eventually, which I think the government would not want to do so. That's why you can look at the government, what they are trying to do now is what? They are trying to pump up the PTO completion of the, uh, the HDB flat, mainly because they just want to make sure that the price is stable. And that is the ultimate aim that they are reaching. So which means that you can look at the recent statistics, it shows that the HDB already start to slow down in terms of what? Their price appreciation. Which have to because why? The price has appreciated considerably quite fast already. So it's important you have to make a decision. Should I hold on to my assets? How much can I see my asset going? Let's say, for example, some of you are holding your asset now, your HDB. You are holding on maybe a 580,000 assets. You ask yourself this question, 10 years down the road, your this property will reach $1 million. 10 years down the road, you have to think, how much can it go up? 10 years to reach 1 million, is it easy? Uh, you have to think. So you, you make a decision based on what you look at it. But of course, please do not sell the property unless you know what is your next step. You need to know what you need to do. That's why it's important that, right, you can check with your PropNex agents out there who invited you for these seminars, right? How you can actually look at your current asset. What can you do? Work out your finances, work out your numbers. Important, we have something called the risk assessment management. RAM, right? Risk Assessment Management System. This can help you to work out your finances to ensure that you are comfortable before you take action and move forward. This is important so that at least you know what is the right thing to do so, right? Like you see, those people who actually sell in 2013, look at this, uh, people who choose to exit, right? If they went in to buy in 2013 and 12 uh, for a private river sound condo, uh, actually they still make 100 over 1,000. Depend on when they sell. You see, 2012, they sold in 2015. Three years to make 150,000. It's still better than holding on to a private pro a HDB property for how much? For 70,000. 70, Is it justifiable? And this one, three years, right? If you look at the five room HDB flat, same thing. From the point is here until here has increased $96,000 in 10 years. Is it good enough? That one you need to think. But if you choose to see uh, 2013, uh, if you choose to go and buy Bartley Rich uh, in 2013, uh, and he sold in 2018, uh, five years, uh, at least he makes uh, 300,000. So I'm trying to let you understand that, right? But of course, some of you say, Kevin, I may not be affordable. I, I can understand that. But important is not so much about that. Important is how much do you want to look at your future growth? Yes, actually, like someone was saying, can I still afford to own a condo that's more than $2,000 per square foot? I'm not saying that you must go for so, so much expensive. But actually, the most important is not about buying a new launch or whatever. Most important is that you need to look at how can you upgrade your current asset. If your asset is 600, 600K, can I upgrade to maybe a million dollar? progressively ma don't don't need to straight away jump to two million dollar no need every time three to five years even myself uh, almost like every five years i will change house you know why but every time five years i try to upgrade i try to increase my net worth on my assets uh, that's what you should do i don't need you to stress yourself please don't go and stress yourself to own a two million dollar asset when you have to be so stressed up uh, all this year which i don't think that is the fair thing including my mother who actually own a hdb flat 130,000 30 years ago. Today is worth how much? 300 over 1,000 in Asian. Is it good enough? Luckily, the son still can manage, right? If not 300 over 1,000 for a three room flat today, can, he do, can she do anything? Nothing. That's the reason why I, I, I'm very uncomfortable. And I, that's the reason why I want to tell everybody here when to look at exit. Because it's important to understand why you exit. 
because you know that your current asset is it good enough eventually all of us remember when you reach from here to 65 years old you need to fully pay up the property because we took a loan by that time this one million is it good enough you decide so i just want to share with you this is something that you need to take note of now i want to ask everyone a question here will you sell your ec what the unit in 2015 at 860,000 today worth 1.29 and the profit is 430,000 will you actually sell since looking at the chart seems like still going up how many of you will sell one or keep you know last time you only pay how much or not $700 per square foot you know Kelvin, you know what? Uh, today, if I sell this seven hundred dollars, uh, do you know I got to pay two thousand dollars per square foot for a new house? Eh? Does it make sense or not? Some people will tell me this already. So, should you sell or not? Of course, it depends on your objective. I I would suggest that you don't sell unless you know what to do with your money. But if you choose to sell because you have a plan before that, I mean, there's a reason of people selling why first they cash out their money so called their profit also same thing they protect the what their capital whatever profit and capital they already protected so what they are trying to do here is to cash out and protect the capital and use this money right is it enough for me to upgrade from one point you see and now your net worth is 1.29 million huh? right can i take my four hundred and thirty thousand? plus my 200,000 that I used to pay that time, with this amount, can I use it to upgrade to maybe a $2 million asset? So with this $2 million asset, can I easily still afford or not? Uh, this is something that you can actually work out already. Looking at it, definitely is more than enough. But do you realize one thing? From a, a $1.3 billion asset, now you have upgraded to a $2 million net worth property. What you are trying to, what I'm trying to tell everybody is to focus on your net worth, your end goal in mind. End goal in mind is how much? Is it a $2 million or is it a $1.3 million? Uh, that's something that you need to think. Don't focus on making profit. Profit is a bonus. Huh? Focus on your net worth. Like for example, this Caspian, right? You look at this. This person who bought at $600 per square foot. So today it has reached 1,003 per square foot. Will you sell or keep? A lot of people say, Kelvin, last time I buy 600. Now, now you know, I'm going to buy, you know, Jurong is going to launch how much? Jurong is going to launch at 2,002 per square foot. Why should I be selling, right? But you see what happened. Today, this property, until today, it has only increased from year to year. So how do you work it out? Is it good enough? That's the reason why all the rich out there who buy assets, right? They do one thing. The initial stage, you must understand that. How should you build your capital? How should you build your net worth? How can you accumulate your wealth moving forward? Don't, I mean, it's, I mean, it's always good to be comfortable. But what happened in the long run? Is it good enough for you? That is my biggest concern, right? Like this. This is a very clear example. Eventually, what happened? It's flat, flat, it's flat, man, right? That means the last 10 years, right, is waste of time. Your asset never grow in price. But if you were to choose to cash out the property in 2013, is to sell, take the profit and buy another two more unit or choose to keep, right? If you choose to sell, what happened? You re-enter in 2014 at Commonwealth Tower. You see? From here, it went up, it went up. At least you make another set of profit over here. Rather than you hold on to the asset for the last 10 years without making much money out of it, and eventually you are stuck. Don't forget, uh, your age also increased by 10 years. Uh, but your, your, your wealth uh, never increased by 10 more years. Uh, your wealth is still the same. Uh. But this guy who chose to sell, his wealth increased by 300,000. The guy who chose not to sell did not increase the wealth by 300,000. So I really advise some of you here who are actually listening to me, look at your current asset. If you're not sure what is your, 
what is your status of your assets? Please check with my Promnex people out there. They can let you know your asset net value now is how much. Your, your current pricing is how much. Time to look at all these things. Whether is it worthwhile for you to do anything, right? This is something that you need to know. Next, I'm going to ask every one of you here. So bought a 560 square feet unit, 500,000 in 2007. And in 2013, you can sell it for 924K. Will you sell? The profit is 424. And I tell you, every month he's enjoying $500 passive income. Can I ask every one of you, will you sell your property? This is the kind of view that you are having. Will you sell or keep? So many people want to sell. Thanks, Ang and Ray, for sharing faster sell, right? All want to sell. So sell or buy? So of course, everybody have different answer here, right? So thanks for those people who really appreciate those people who really replies me and make effort to do so. But I, I, I just want you to know one thing. A lot of people say, Kelvin, if I were to sell my 500,000 asset that I bought in 2007, do you know that if I'm going to buy something today for this kind of size, I got to pay $1.3 million? So the question is, why should I do that? A lot of people will be thinking this way right nothing wrong with that but you see because a lot of people say kelvin i want to enjoy passive income but i say those who think about passive income actually i really feel that a lot of people think about passive income is a wrong move eh? this doesn't apply in singapore context in my personal opinion if you are in the europe you are in the so-called us if you are in australia maybe i can agree with you because why they use 10 percent down payment but in singapore you don't have capital you can forget about buying assets you know because our property appreciates so much faster than what you can save there every month you get 500 dollars passive income i i, I want to ask you this 500 dollars where do you keep you probably already spend it away but most importantly here is that my focus is always i want to increase my net worth because my net worth is more than important than my passive income because my passive income i will spend my money away i believe many of you will also spend in fact those who can afford a property 500 dollars inside your bank account you also don't know where the money is especially now everybody just use your handphone to scan and pay money pay money you don't even feel that your money is losing it you don't even feel anything at all now right you only feel that eventually you only have that that little amount of money that's the reason why I'm saying it's important for you to what? See how you can increase your net worth or key bills, right? I mean, of course, there are many things that you can do, right? So I also have heard a lot of people. I mean, to me, I always feel that to me, in my opinion, because I've been working in the real estate for the last 20 years, I've been buying and selling properties, right? I, I, I definitely think that asset is the most safest bet for me in Singapore, not because I'm a property agent. It's because I have done it myself. So I know that uh, it is definitely 100% safer compared to anything that I'm talking about. Why? First, property, I'm the CEO of the property. Any stocks and company, I have no control because the CEO don't know go where I will be in trouble. But property, I'm always the CEO. So I can choose to buy or choose to sell. I, I, I make decision. I won't be cobbled because I, I decided to do what? But a company can be quite scary. One, eh? The guy who makes some noise, uh, the share price can drop scary. You know? So that's why to me, I always feel very insecure. I like to be more in control of my money. So that's how I feel. I don't like my money to be controlled by somebody. I prefer my money to be controlled by myself. Right. So that depends on an individual here. But you look at it, look at city life same problem it reach here then it become here flat flat increase by ten dollars why is it like that actually for resale property is like that some of the problem is you have seen go higher right but some probably eventually become stagnant why is it so because because resale property is a little bit different because resale property depend a lot on valuation you, you, if let's say, for example, if this is 1,006 per square foot, someone want to sell at 1,008 per square foot, will you want to pay 1,008 per square foot where many people are selling at 1,006 per square foot? No, right? So eventually, what happened? This 1,008 cannot materialize and everybody is still buying at 1,006. 
That's the reason why the prices has been to be flat in this way. Unless every one of you can agree to bring the price to 1008, then the market will change to 1008. But if it's not, then it's in, the price will stagnate for a while unless market change. So that's the reason why I always tell people, if you have a chance at option, think about cashing out, re put the money. Actually, if you just remember uh, the profit plus your capital, this amount go to the new $2 million asset. Let's say for example, now your property is 1.3 million. Your current this property is 1.3 million. You only take this capital and profit. Where do you put? You put into this 2 million. Actually, you never lose a single cent. The money is just parked at the 2 million. But at least you know one thing, your profit, your capital is protected. And you own a $2 million network property. And that's what you need to have. That's the part that you need to decide which is a better option for you. Uh, that's something you decide. So you see, people who choose to sell in 2013, right, at this point of time, and he chose to went to J Gateway in 2013, even if he will sell in 2022, you look at it, it's still better than you hold on to a second line. So this is something that you need to think. I, I mean, there's a lot of choices and a lot of thinking that you need to do. My objective is not to tell you what to buy. Sorry, uh, some of you would ask me, right? But I, my objective is to tell you one thing. What decision that you need to think about? How you can use your money to work harder for you? Please don't work hard for money. Let your money work hard for you. Your first set of money has already been built for you. You need to leverage on how to use your money to help you to build further. And that is important, right? Do think about it, right? Like this panorama, same thing, 2014. If you were to choose and sell City Light and went to Pano, at least you got the chance to what? Make profit again. So this is something for you to know. That's why holding on to a private for long, is it logical? No right, no wrong answer. Lah. But I just want to tell you here, the focus is not about holding on long. The focus is, can we all type inside the chat group or not? Tell everybody net worth, net worth. Tell everybody net worth. Your net worth is how much type, type inside the chat group. Come, let's buddy. Everybody, that's time in the chat group. Just to remind everybody, your net worth, your net worth is how much. Yes. Thank you so much, everyone. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Yes. Why? Why do I want everybody to type? Because the whole idea of typing is to let us understand we should be focusing on net worth, not passive income, not passive income. Net worth, net worth is the ultimate aim thank you so much everyone for helping me to type in the answer thank you so to me everything that money is inside the house is not money it's called numbers numbers got no value one unless you take the numbers out to become money then it become something that can work for, work for you but if you choose to put money inside the house below not selling it's just a number unless you take out the numbers become money then it become real money so this is something that you need to think a little bit more how to use your money to really work hard for you and not to let your money sit there and do nothing. Don't forget, don't just remember one thing, my friend. Your age will continue to go higher. You must be within a short frame of time to let your money work hard for you so that your age, when you go up, you can have a better life. Remember, no matter how we save our money, it can never be faster than how the asset value has gone up in price. That is something that you must agree with me. Because you have seen for the last 10 years how much the asset value has gone up in prices. Just look at this. You will know the answer. Even someone who tells me, Kelvin, last time you know I should have paid ABSD. Actually, it's true. Those who paid ABSD five years ago, six years ago, Actually, nothing wrong with paying ABSD. Because 10 years ago, those people who pay ABSD and 10 years today, right? Actually, a lot of value and asset has gone up higher than what they have paid for their ABSD. So a lot of time we always think that paying ABSD is a cost. Actually, it's not there. Because at the end of the day, you must see the asset value has gone up faster than what you have paid for the ABSD. So this is something that you probably need to think a little bit more about all these things here. So like this uncle, right, when I read this newspaper, this newspaper, it was sometimes back. 
But you see, Kelvin, my you see, buy property, rental increase, staff cost increase, but the price of my book keep coming down. How are you going to make money like this? I foresee this problem. The best thing to do now is when I make a little bit of money, go into what? Property. And today he owned a couple of set, assets, right? Because the husband and wife, you see, that's the reason why a lot of owners out there, remember when you are young, you have income, you must start to use your income to help you to work. If not, you pay income tax, but someone will take your income tax away, but you are not using your income to help you to build your asset, then you are wasting your money to pay income tax. For me, it's always I believe. That's why pay income tax, you must learn how to use your income to help you to grow your net worth. That's something that you, you must look at it. Yeah, right? So, okay, just a little bit about myself. Some of you may not know who I am because I'm the business for the last 20 years. We're running the agency. Now we have close to 12,000 agents. So myself is a... a, a person who really so passionate about the real estate and I do a lot of research work and I really do a lot of educational seminars uh, so that I can educate people about this. In fact, this coming uh, 29th and 30th of uh, this month, I'll be running a two-day workshop 9 to 6 o'clock at Suntec City actually is to teach people how about how to actually build your real estate portfolio. In fact, this is something that I'm doing. If you are interested, just check with our agents out there you probably can join me in my two-day workshop you probably will feel so worthwhile to attend two days because two days i'm going to share with you exactly the strategy of how i built my real estate network how do you systematically grow your assets check out with your agents probably can let you know better in fact i just want to tell you i was also a normal ordinary owners out there last time 10 20 years ago i've actually owned this hdb flat i'm so blessed that because of this hdb has changed my life because it helps me to realize that there's something called real estate that I can work. And because I can work, I started to become a real estate agent after I own a HDB. So that is where I start to realize and I start to learn. I start to learn from all the gurus out there on how to make property, how to make money through property. I also learn from people, you know, when I see how they make money, I, I start ask myself, how can I be like them? So I have this uh, knowledge to do so. That's the reason why today I can still own all these assets. And why am I sharing all this? Not because I want to howl into every one of you. No, because I want to tell you, oh, I also start from a small little asset. How I slowly grow it upwards. Is there a formula towards it? I want to tell you, yes. Whatever I'm sharing with you just now is exactly what I've been doing to myself. I talk and I delivered what I do. So I really hope that all those people don't just work hard for money. Let your money work hard for you. Same thing, you see, I bought this property, $2,000 per square foot. I bought at $2,000 per square foot, 2050. Uh, today, the price is two cents. I easily raise it on a profit. Don't let your money start there. Let the money work for you, right? I'm going to share with you in detail, right, in most of the workshop that I've done. Of course, I also being featured in the Sunday Times to talk about what, how I've actually really shared because this, this person actually attended my seminars at that point of time, this journalist. And he really, she really felt that she has learned a lot of tips from me how she can actually understand about growing asset. And that's something I'm very passionate to really share with you guys here. Whatever I share with you guys, my friend, I am not the kind of person who tells you to invest. I'm in fact more kiasi than anybody because I really, I, I worried about money one because at the end of the day, I mean, all of us start from nothing, right? So I can understand how everybody feels. That's the reason why my book, my, my training, I'm um, teaching people how to look at timing, how to look at financing, how to look at strategies, how to can you do the right thing? So that is important so that you can understand how it works. So can I ask everyone this question? How many of you felt that the, today the new launch prices are, are very high now? If you say yes, type yes. If you say no, type no inside the chat group. Very high, yes. Thank you so much for being so honest. <laughs> Yes, I say, well, everybody say hi, eh? correct, right? Honest, the truth here is you are not wrong to say that it's high. The only question is, will it be higher only next time? Because a lot of people cannot accept today's price because the market has gone up so much. Honestly, I also cannot accept because I've been a business for the last 20 years, right? So I know more than anybody in terms of my numbers. And the, the, the problem here is that even I know the numbers, uh, I still have to accept the number will still go higher. That's the truth, right? Why do I say so? You look at this. 
in 2003 until today. In fact, in fact, I want to tell every one of you here, let's be very honest to ourselves. Let's be very honest to ourselves. Every time a real estate cycle, five years, you think that the price five years ago is high, today is higher. The previous five years ago, you will ask yourself, Kelvin, I should have bought five years ago. Then the person will say, Kelvin, I should have bought 10 years ago. Then the next person will tell you, I should have bought 15 years ago. Forever you are working backward, right? You, you forever will never buy a property. Why? Because every time you look at it, uh, every time a lower, it's always even higher than the previous lower. But every time a high, right? It's always higher than the previous high. Like. That is more scary. And you look at just the reason one. The reason COVID uh, has brought the price to a new high. That is the truth. And, and those people who can afford to own an asset at that point of time, especially during COVID period, uh, anybody who's there to own asset, uh, I must tell you one thing, uh, they definitely have enough bullets to hold on. Because we all buy probably during uh, COVID period, right? In fact, I bought my lender probably also during COVID period, right? You must have certain holding power. If not, it's very tough, right? But why am I telling everybody to see this, this whole picture here? I'm just trying to let you understand one thing. The moment you start to think it's high, actually the next high will be coming. We have to accept it. For those people, I don't know, except if you are 20 years old, you probably cannot feel it. But if you are my, my age now, 40 plus, you will start to realize the last 20 years, how you have wished that you have bought the property 20 years ago. But unfortunately, the time is over. So when is the likely the next low? I honestly tell you, I also cannot tell you. Look at the current market. It doesn't seem to be low, right? Why is it so? Why the prices are not coming down? You look at our COVID. Our COVID, uh, we all expected the property prices to come down drastically. But unfortunately, it only come out a very little less, about 1%. Then after that, it went up more than a percent. And subsequently, it went higher. Why? Because real estate is all about supply demand. When there is not much supply, there's a huge demand, prices went up. Today, why the prices actually go higher? Because there is not enough supply. That's why there's a strong demand. Oh, and when China attacked Taiwan, I will tell you, my friend, if that really happened, actually the whole thing, if you, I mean, if you look at the whole, if you look at, if you look at Singapore, actually we are very blessed because while we are very well positioned to be a safe haven for many rich people coming into Singapore. And in fact, a lot of Taiwanese are coming in to set up family office here. China people set up office here. Why? You look at Hong Kong recently has also been trying to pull who, who people to come to where? To their country to put money to set up family office. You realize that if you, are, if you have been observing newspaper. So if you ask me, right, when all these things happen, uh, actually Singapore is become a very well branded place to stay in this. It's a safe place, uh, I must say, right? Of course, I, I, I don't want to say anything, but I just want you to understand that, right? I don't want you to speculate. You can never plan when it's a low one. Because why? You easily must hold the property for the next three to five years, right? How do you know about this next three to five years? Nobody knows the answer. Whatever you can talk about the possible scenario, for me, remember, don't speculate. If, I, if you look at what I own today, if you look at what I've owned my asset today, if I keep on thinking what's going to happen, will I actually continue to own asset? I would. I will always think, but no action. But most important, I'm not, for me, I, 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 I'm not looking at speculation. And in fact, Singapore, because of our cooling measure, has been so tight that a lot of speculation already out. Those today can hold on to a property because they have the income to support. And that's the reason why there is no, uh, don't have that kind of property that dropped in prices. Uh, not like 2008 layman crisis came, right? The property price really dropped a lot. You know, from very scary. Uh, 2008 dropped until $1,200 per square foot. I was in that market. But why is it happening in that point of time? Because 
because that time don't have cooling measure. But today cooling measure is scary lah. You want to do any speculation also difficult. Right? You want to turn left, turn right, also very tight already. No, now tight until so tight already, right? It's really, really tough, right? That's the main reason. You look at Coco Palm 2014. At that point of time, people say, Kelvin, $600 over dollar is expensive. But those people who bought $600, eventually they sell at how much? $900, $1,000. From here, they sold here. Do they make profit? Yes. But this is 2014. Eh? Look at 2019 treasure. At that point of time, people say 1000 2003 is also expensive. Today, they sub sale at what price? 1718 per square foot. When you start to think it's expensive, the nick high will be high. That's one thing that you need to take note of. Look at Florence. At that point of time, I can tell you, people can buy eight nine hundred dollars per square foot from the surrounding property. But today, they sell at this price. Sub sale uh, is not from developer. Uh. That means someone who bought a property from the developer and they sub sale up to a new buyer uh, from one thousand two to one thousand eight per square foot. Uh, uh, that's how much they make in terms of profit. Uh. But if you think that the market is not stable, you see 2019, especially those people you know, 2019 interest rate was the highest at which price? The interest rate was higher, almost 3.2% at uh, that point of time, 3.2. Uh, those people that not buy property when interest rate is high, they miss out the opportunity. But those who take action, they actually make this kind of profit. Why? Most people will not buy property when the market is weak one. But the smart one will always buy property when the market is slow one. Today, the market is it fast enough? Definitely not. Because why? Of high interest rate. So you need to think a little bit more, right? How to look at property. You look at this North Park residences. I show you, right? During 2015, North Park residences was launched at 1003. In fact, the surrounding can buy cheaper in price other project in Yishun. But today, this 1003 become 1007. But you look at the rest of the property, it only went up 4750. S3 still not bad, 193, 127, 243. But you look at this, it's close to $400 per square foot, you know. You see, uh, people who think that you buy high will eventually don't make profit. But actually, the answer is you buy high, in fact, you still make more. Why is it so? So this is something that you need to think a little bit more before you see. It. So it does not mean that I buy high, I cannot sell high. No, just like this. They buy high at that point of time, 2002, 2003, 2004. But today, they can still sell at this price. Why? Because a lot of people are looking at buying something that is newer. So a thinking process has all changed. You cannot use your own mindset to look at property. Today is a new way of buying properties. People are changing. That's why the younger people, they want something that is new. That's why they are willing to pay a little bit more higher in price. Why? Because they want something that is new, not old, right? You see, uh, someone who buy a resale, probably nothing wrong. But they will consider, if I'm going to spend money renovation for another 300000 I might as well buy a new one that I can only to renovate so much. Everything is brand new. So you have to see the differences because renovation is the cost. You need to borrow or you spend away the money. But buying a brand new, you don't need to spend because why? Very minimum touch up because all those, all those white goods, all those necessary things are all done up. Actually, you don't need to spend a lot of money. You just buy furniture. The cost of buying, the cost of spending money eh, is lower. And that's something that you need to think a little bit more. That's why you can see from here, that time, Taiwanese court, 2017, 2022, you look at the land cost has increased. Why is it property prices has been increasing? I can only tell you that what you see today, you think is expensive. Two years down the road, you will start to see a much more expensive asset coming up. It will continue to move this way because Singapore is, the land is scarce. So that's the reason why the land cost has been going up. And that's the reason why you can see how the land has been moving. 
So that is how you can see. You you cannot, you look at today, Jurong site, uh, the Jurong, right, eventually still have to sell. Look at today, mass market today, a lot of properties are already selling 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, Lento, all these are already selling at above $2,000 per square foot. Many of us can never believe, but today it has already successfully done such kind of prices. People already accepted it, right, because of the land cost. You cannot go back to the past of buying this kind of land cost. Wouldn't happen, one, wouldn't happen, uh, wouldn't happen. Anybody who own an M block property today, will you want to sell so low price? You won't want. So market have to move forward in this way. Just like District 15 Tiamsu, going to launch very soon. The land cost they bought is 1488 per square foot. That was in when? 2021. Okay. Today, recently, the, another land was bidded, which is Mayor Park. The land bid was 228. From you see, the price has increased just one year differences. Uh, the land cost has increased by $200 per square foot to 1668, uh, just on 1448, right? So can you, can you see just one year differences, one year plus differences, the land cost has increased. And that's the reason why you expect property, you, you think that the land, you think the current launch is expensive. But I can tell you two years down the road, you will start to see that the price of the new asset will be even higher. And you start to see that what you are paying today is actually low. Just like, just like what I'm telling you, five years ago, three years ago, you can buy a three room brand new at $1.5 million. But today you got to pay $2 million. Down the road, you can only expect one thing. You got to pay more and get smaller unit. So if you have an opportunity, don't look at speculation. Look at what you can afford. Own something, start somewhere better than you never start. That's what my, my suggestion to everybody here. So that's why I want to share with you something here, which is very important. How to look at two critical key points, right? To spot the safe entry assets. I mean, everybody wants to buy property. Most important is how to look at a safe bet, how to determine a safe entry. That is the key. So I have two points. Two points is how to look at safe entry, how to look at safe exit. Two key points. If you know how to look at these two aspects, you will know that. First, why do I say it's important to know these two things? First, you know the entry, you know how to exit. That's the most important. Right? Let's talk about entry first. I mean, I want to ask everybody a question. You look at Singapore map, it's divided by three zones. Core Central, RCR, and OCR. Of course, Core Central is the so-called yellow, this one, which is the most prime area, further by the mass market. Right? This is an OCR. I want to ask everybody a question. If given a choice, will you buy OCR or RCR? Given the price tag is so close, which one will you buy? If let's say the price gap between RCR and OCR, the gap is so narrow, which one will you want to buy in today's market? RCR or OCR? Ah, thank you so much. Right? Why? Because you know that when the place is smaller in price, when the co when, when the land, when, when the supply is the lesser, right, the price is always higher. And because it's nearer to the town, right, the price is also higher as well. So this is something that you need to take note of, right? Next, if given a choice for you to buy at 2001 per square foot for RCR, will you buy OCR or RCR? If you look at this, look at today, eh? this chart will tell you what, no? RCR on average is 2.6. CCR on average is 29. OCR is $2,000, almost $2,001. Which one will you buy? RCR or OCR? If you look at this, RCR or OCR, people will pay what? If today you are given a choice, right? 2001, will you buy RCR or OCR? Yes, thank you so much, right? Why? You see, why, I, why, why I'm looking at this? the safe entry whether you are buying what doesn't matter but most important i always look at how do i determine the safe entry price when the entry price is right and i can easily exit but i if i even i cannot exit i know one thing right my ocr is going at about 2001 per square foot if i can buy something at rcr even at 2002 per square foot or even at 2003 is it something that is very close to one another the gap is it safe enough? Unless I tell you to buy RCR at 2008, maybe you say, wow, Kevin, too expensive. 
And now if it's transacted below what is average price, right? Uh, that's something we call safe bet, safe entry. Like for example, this case study, I happen to use Blossom by the park. I just want to use this case study to determine. You, you, you can use what my, these two things uh, to go and look at what properties you want to buy. How do I look at safe entry? This development, if it's 2001 plus per square foot, is it a safe bet? Even at 2002, is it a safe bet? Let's see further. Today in a new launch, OCR already setting an average of 2001. At least I know that in the market today, average has been gone to 2001, 2000, some has gone to 2002, 2005 as well. Like Lentor model, you see the high can be 2005. Sky Eden, all this has already been done in the OCR. But if I'm talking about RCR, now starting from 2002 per square foot, is it something that is safe? Uh, that's how you look at it. You look at Amo residences, the high can be 2004, 2003. So OCR already done this price. People already accepted it. Uh, and you look at it, uh, it 2000, it's a 2005 square feet. People already paid 2005, almost 2004 per square foot. Uh. You look at the resale market in OCR, even for seaside residences, the average price has already hit these kind of prices. Two, 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 one, two, five. Wow, you see this six, seven, six, four is 2006. You look at Panorama, Amokyo, has also hit $2,000. And their age is already much more older in, the, in terms of age. But they are still hitting their kind of prices at this higher price. You look at RCR today, a new launch transaction. Average price has gone up from here to here. So today we are talking about RCR. Are we buying something that is considered very high in terms of prices? Why is it that the developer would don't want to sell higher in prices? You see, when the average price has been done at 2006, why the developer today want to sell at a lower price? Mainly because I want to tell you one a very important thing. As a developer, today you hold 300 units. You will be more careful in your pricing because the market is unstable. But I also want to tell you, if you are the resale owner today, you own one unit, will you want to sell cheaper? You have the holding power because you only own one. But the developer who hold more unit, right, they'll be more what? Careful. So that's the reason why you can say it very clear. I can tell you, right, most of the development will not sell off very fast. 30%, 40%, 50%, 60% will be good enough. They just want to sell this number. But in fact, I want to tell you, the good news here is what? If they don't sell well fast, uh, means that moving forward, they can sell even at a higher price. Which means those people who are first mover who bought cheaper, right? Actually, they have a chance to even see their price going higher. And that is the good news for everybody. Like for example, even the latest leaf at MB, RCR development, the price has already hit 2005, 2008, except for this one, 2001, close to 2002. It is something that people already has accepted and willing to pay 2526 per square foot. It's not something that you, you are talking about paying more expensive. And today we are looking at the price at 2002, 2003 per square foot. Something that I feel is still safe to enter. Resale, look at Highline Residences, Sterling Residences. You look at the year of age, huh? these are all 99, huh? 2013, 2017. Huh? The price tag has already hit this price. Huh? Maximum price has been hitting at this price already. Eh? These are all at Tiong Bahru area. Atra, Queenstown area, which is all within the area of this, uh, this Blossom area. Market, you see Echelon, right? All these are very close, but the price is already very close to what? The current price. Uh, that's something for you to see. And if you look at the resale today, this is a uh, resale property at Atra, Atra, Atra. Eh? You look at the sub-sale market today, 2023. Look at the price done. This is very, very close to where? Very, very close to Blossom. Already resale at an older age has already done this price. A brand new development going at 2002 per square foot range. Is this something safe to enter? Ah, that's for you to see. So that's why I'm saying like one north gateway. If you look at this one north. You look at one North Gateway today, resale, uh, new launch versus resale. Uh, you look at resale, even for one North, people say Kelvin, you see, they are only selling at 1,006 per square foot. This development is very close to one another. 
Resell property 1,006 per square foot. Why would I want to pay 2,002 per square foot? You see, this is what happened here. So, but you see, those people who buy here today, they actually make the profit already. Eh? But you hold on to this asset, you see, who buy resale, what happened? Stuck. Lah. It's called stuck. You can buy cheap. That doesn't mean you make more. Right? You want to be here. To be here. Ah, that's what you do. You look at this, Rochester, same thing. Those people who enter here make profit here. But those who hold on to property or bought resale property, it's cheap. You look at the price. It's price is so cheap. But cheap doesn't mean that you can buy. Depend on you. But why is it so? Why is it that the price doesn't go higher? Very simple. Because those people who bought at this price $900 per square foot, they, don't, they, they just need to sell at $1,006 per square foot. They can let go. But you buy from them at one, one triple five. You buy at one triple five. I want to ask all of you here, how much do you want to sell in the future? You probably want to sell at 1,009 per square foot. If you want to sell at 1,009 per square foot, but they don't, they don't need to sell at 1,009. They just keep on selling at 1,006. They really make the profit. But you need to sell at 1,009 to make profit. So you will have a stress element. And in fact, today, if you buy a resale here, you are actually buying the peak of 2013, that point of time, which is the peak. So my question to you here is, which is a better option? You have to decide what is best. That's why on top of that, we talk about entry. There's three more things to determine whether how to determine a safe entry, safe, a safe and stable asset. I mean, you look at the price tag, it seems safe, right? It means it, it seems to you that it's very comfortable. How to ensure it's more stable? The key word is stable. First, supply versus demand. If you look at this area, the good news here is that here is, uh, uh, I would say these are all those people who works there uh, generally are well-paid people. Uh. When they are well-paid means uh, the tenant also can give you a higher rental. Which means that if you choose not to sell your property today, right, you still enjoy a very good rental if you want to. Because they are paid slightly more than many people out there. Because why? Biopolis, la, all, you know, all these people, they are paid higher. Technology people, they are always paid higher, right? Uh, that's the thing. And you look at all the companies who are there, are all the solid companies. Schools are also there. So a lot of big companies, schools are all at this location. Which means that rentability, people who want to purchase, is also better. Next, the most important is the working population. There is a strong demand over here. But the good news here is there is only 4,000 over unit in this area to serve 50,000 of workforce. Not talking about other people from other places to come in and buy this area. That means this place provide you with a stable in terms of rental. It doesn't have a lot of competition when you want to own an asset, when you want to sell. You see, when I want to buy something, I must know who is my competitors. If I don't have a lot of competitors, at least I know that I'm buying something that is at a stable stage, a stable asset. And that's something that you need to see. I, that's why I feel that it's very stable in a sense. Right? Of course, if you look at further, MRT and connectivity, these are all just five minutes, eight minutes walks to the MRT station. You have, first, you have a very strong demand. There's not enough supply. As I mentioned, property price up or down is based on supply demand. And next, we got MRT station, which is very near. So it's very easy for you to rent. Third, you have a reputable school, which is within one kilometer, fair few. So you can serve people for buy for own stay as well. You can also rent to people who wants to work there. You can sell to people who wants to work near to their, stay near to their workplace. So the exit is always very what? Safe in terms of stability. And that is something for you to look at. You look at the rental for One North in 2009. This TOP in 2009, a TOP, uh, a one bedroom today, I uh, ran out at 3850. A 400 to 500 square feet, you see Sterling Residences. This is a brand new, just TOP in 2022. $4,200 for a 400 to 500 square feet. And this development is 1,000 over units. We are talking about this is only 300 over units. So I want to show you this is what. 
One is the older development, already 3.8. A newer development at 4,002. So is it a safe entry? Is it a stable asset to own, right? With no competition. One North, TOP in 2009, right? You see people make their kind of profit. Sterling, also got people make profit, even they pay higher. Doesn't mean it's not, huh? it will still make, right? So second point is what? Exit. How do I determine the exit? First, you look at today. OCR, just now we mentioned, is already transacted close to 2001 average. We know that RCR 99 years generally already done at 2005 to 2006. OCCR already done at 28. Now, if for Blossom, starting price from 2001 to 2002, actually the price gap between here is so narrow, is it safe bet? And we already know that people are paying this price. Is it a safe bet? That's why I'm saying I cannot guarantee you will make profit or not. But I want to make sure that you buy something that is safe first. Safe, safe. Only when you are safe, then you are comfortable. Because last thing that we want to own an asset, we feel very insecure. And that's the key. And the best thing that this development is going to TOP in 2026. And there is not a lot of supply. And especially just now, I show you that area, right? There is not much of competitors except for one more launches there. Other than that, there's no competitors around the area, which means that you want to sell, you want to exit, you want to rent. The competition is so narrow. So if you ask me, it's something that you can exit easily if you want to down the road. And today, look at the price gap. From, from this is a RCR versus OCR. Look at the price gap uh, from, from a gap of $800 uh, to now a gap of $500. The gap has been narrowing. Means what? When the gap is narrow, means that your chances is very close to buying a uh, RCR. You see, if just like I mentioned, right, 2002 is this blossom. And now already done at 26 on average for RCR. Now your gap between this and OCR is so narrow. Is it something that is safe? I always want to mention one thing, safe. I mean, nobody can tell you can make profit or not. I only can share with you how to look at safe bet. Safe bet and exit will be easier for you. That's what I'm trying to say. Even if you cannot exit, you know you are buying something that is safe because the mass market already transacted how much? 2,000 and above per square foot already. So that gives you a safe bet. To me, I always want to buy this property when I know it's certain. I don't like to guess. That's called uncertainty. Anything that is uncertainty is called danger. But I know what is already being done. I know what is called certainty. I feel it's safer. So that is how I look at assets. I, as I mentioned to you, I want to make sure that I want to be safe before I buy anything. I, I don't like to take risks. That's how I own assets. That's why I like to have assurance. Assurance. If I get assurance, I'm comfortable. If I not get assurance, I feel very insecure, right? That's why, is it safe to buy? I only look at supply demand. Low supply, high demand. Rental is easy. MRT connectivity is there. One kilometer to Fairfield within one kilometer. So to me, it's safe. And the rental is always strong there because there's a huge workforce and well-paid salary workforce. And that gives you a lot of certainties with not much of competition that helps you to rent out the property easily. Even the property never appreciate. You can easily rent out because there's not much of competition out there. So that's why I say certainty give you safe and sound assurance. And that is important for you guys here. So thank you so much, everybody, for seeing this. In fact, my next partner will show you exactly, right, how you look at this asset and understand a little bit more about the Blossom.